Arthur Schopenhauer was born in 1788 in Danzig and gained recognition as a philosopher in the last decade of his life. His main work, The World as Real and Representation, laid the foundation for his profound metaphysical insights. Schopenhauer's philosophy has been the subject of both admiration and criticism, particularly his metaphysical views, which anticipate many developments in modern philosophy and quantum mechanics. This video is based on Bernardo Castro's Decoding Schopenhauer's Metaphysics book, and it delves into these intricate connections. Schopenhauer's Metaphysics divides the world into two fundamental categories, real and representation. The real is the inner essence of everything in the world, the underlying reality that is not dependent on our observation. It is the driving force behind all phenomena, a blind, unprincipled, and amoral force that manifests in various degrees across nature, from inanimate objects to human actions and thoughts. The real is intrinsically linked to experiential states. These include desires, impulses, other volitional states, that constitute the inner nature of beings. This connection means that while the real itself is not purpose-driven in a moral sense, it is the source of all motivations and drives that creature experiences. For instance, hunger, fear, desire, these are manifestations of the real at various levels of complexity. The other division is representation. Representations are the outer appearances of the world, how it presents itself to our observation. These are the mental images and perceptions through which we experience the world. For Schopenhauer, the physical world exists only as representations in the consciousness of the observing subject. While the real itself is not purpose-driven, the representations and manifestations of the real in humans and other beings can have purposes. For example, humans act with intentions and goals, which are representations of the real, even though the real itself operates beyond this individual purposes. So the real itself is the superpose of all purposes, all intentions and goals. And the representations can have purposes, intentions. It's when the real in large is manifested in the form of humans or when it becomes individualized, like in humans, can have purpose. I can think of an analogy like air around us and the air captured within a balloon. When the air gets captured within a balloon, a constraint is exerted on it and so the pressure increases. Now, the goal of the air within the balloon is to join to the outer air. The outer air is there, but when it gets containerized, it finds a purpose. Analogy of the air within balloon, changing the properties or dissociation of the air within balloon from the surrounding air creates these properties and creates purpose. The wheel at large is like that air around us and us like the air within the balloon. Quantum observation and wheel. Quantum mechanics presents the measurement problem where the act of observation affects the system being observed. Castro links this to Schopenhauer's notion of the real, suggesting that the observers will play a role in the collapse of the quantum possibilities into a single outcome. So the real of the observer is part of the larger real or the real that is behind everything. And because the observer itself is a dissociated form of the real at large, now it has some goals, some purposes. And based on those goals and purposes, 
can find experiments and can do measurements to find the answer. And therefore that can result in a single state out of all possible states that a wave function can have. And therefore the measurement causes the collapse of the wave function because the measurement behind the scene comes from a purpose. The role of consciousness, quantum mechanics is a debated topic. The mm. Copenhagen interpretation, particularly used consciousness as a necessity for the collapse of the wave function. And Castro argues that Schopenhauer's framework, which uses the real as fundamental and representations dependent on the observer's mind, align with interpretations that posit consciousness as integral to the collapse of the quantum wave function. Superposition and association. Schopenhauer's idea of the real being a unified and divided force resonates with the quantum concept of superposition. The real at large has all the purposes, all the possibilities, all the intentions and goals or moralities. In quantum superposition, particles exist in multiple states simultaneously until observed. Kestrup draws an analogy between these and Schopenhauer's view that individuality is a dissociation of the real, akin to observation leading to a single state from multiple possibilities in quantum mechanics. Indivisibility and entanglement. Quantum entanglement, where particles remain interconnected regardless of distance, is likened to Schopenhauer's wheel at large and indivisible whole underlying all phenomena. Castro suggests that the interconnected nature of entangled particles mirrors the interconnectedness of the wheel across individual representations. In quantum mechanics, the entanglement happens between two or more subatomic particles. However, the Schopenhauer's wheel at large refers to a universal interconnectedness. The key idea is that while entanglement involves specific instances, uh, it points to an interconnectedness, but Schopenhauer's wheel points to even more universal interconnectedness beyond space-time and distance. Schopenhauer's metaphysics is also presented as a form of objective idealism, where the world in itself, or real, is mental, constituted by experiential states. And this is contrasted with subjective idealism, which focuses on individual perception. Perception, in Schopenhauer's view, results from the interaction between internal experiential states and the external superposed experiential states of the real at large. The dynamic interplay creates new experiential states perceived as the physical world. Again, going back to the balloon analogy, when the air is containerized, now there is an internal dynamic within the balloon, within the air inside the balloon that is different than the dynamic outside or the air around us. The interplay between the two is what Castro argues is the perceived physical world. The foundational concepts of real and representation establishes a clear and consistent framework that challenges materialistic paradigms. The current materialistic paradigm is that everything is made of subatomic particles and there is no such thing as interconnectedness beyond the space and time. And Schopenhauer's metaphysics and its link to quantum mechanics questions this materialistic paradigm. By linking these metaphysical ideas to quantum mechanics, Castro vindicates Schopenhauer's philosophical insights, their enduring relevance and potential to illuminate the mysteries of the quantum world. The synthesis of 19th century metaphysics with 20th century physics offers a compelling perspective that bridges the gap uh, between philosophy and science underscoring the timeless nature of Schopenhauer's vision. Thank you for watching.
and let me know what you think about the link between Schopenhauer's wheel and representation and quantum mechanics.